Angela Kane is the former UN High Representative for Disarmament Affairs and oversaw the investigation into the sarin gas attack in Ghouta in 2013. She's now a professor at Sciences Po University and joins us now live from Paris. Angela, great to have you with us. Uh, so we're hearing that OPCW inspectors um, haven't gained access to Duma yet. In terms of gathering evidence, how, wor how worrying is a delay? A delay is very worrying because it depends on what kind of chemical was used. If it was, for example, a chlorine bomb, then what it means is that the chlorine is very easily uh, susceptible to disappear in the air and is no longer available to be tested by the samples that one has taken. If there's another chemical that is being used, such as, for example, sarin or a sarin-like compound, that stays in the environment and in the bodies much longer. That can be up to six months, for example. But chlorine evaporates very, very quickly. And so even if the, if the attack happened on the 7th of April, one wonders if actually something could still be found as credible evidence in terms of the samples. What will happen is that you have people interviewed and they will be able to give evidence. Uh, but one thing the inspectors won't do is apportion blame if they find evidence of, attack, of an attack. And of course, Russia is saying, look, there was no attack and uh, any, um, uh, any uh, opinion of an attack has, has all been staged. If there's evidence of an attack, OPCW inspectors won't say who it is they think carried out, it out. It has always been made, been made very clear by the... Uh, Exec Director General of the OPCW that uh, the fact-finding mission, which is currently in, in Duma, is not going to apportion blame. There's no accountability. They will simply state the facts and they will forward these facts to the Executive Council of the OPCW, which you said has about 50 members, and then also to the Security Council. The Security Council of the United Nations meets once every month on this issue to basically say what is left of the Syria chemical weapons program, if the, anything is left, what have you been able to do, what have you achieved, what has Syria told us in the meantime. So there's a very strong dialogue going on which basically looks at this every single month. Now, your team had challenges uh, during your investigation on the ground in 2013, including being shot at. Uh, how difficult is it for a team to operate? It is very difficult. And I remember when we went in in 2013, first of all, you have to understand that the Syrian government has to give agreement to the team to deploy into a specific area. In our case, it was very difficult also because they were fighting or there was fighting going on and uh, the government said, we cannot guarantee your security. So that was one of the issues. But it's absolutely crucial that the team has access to the site because only then can they take uh, samples from the bodies, from the people, can get first-hand stories and then also have a chain of custody for the samples and that is actually giving the final proof. The fact-finding mission of the OPCW until now has not been able to deploy into Syria for other in investigations simply because the security situation was not good enough for them to go in. But what is it uh, that it's hoped will come out of the fact-finding mission? Because obviously back in 2013, the plan was to ultimately destroy Syria's weapons stockpile. I noticed that, uh, that chlorine, actually, it wasn't one of the uh, chemicals which was included in that plan. But clearly, Syria, even after that destruction of its chemical weapons stockpile, is still able to carry out attacks. So what needs to happen going forward? You're right that chlorine is not part of the chemical regime in terms of chemical weapons. Only when you use chlorine in massive quantities, excessive quantities, and you use it as a weapon to intimidate people, to affect people, possibly to kill people, then it is considered a chemical weapon. But chlorine is commercially available. It is always there. But on the other hand, Syria has made a declaration at the time, in 2013, the OPCW has taken uh, stock of what there was. It has basically sent a so-called declaration assessment team to uh, see that those indications that were given by the, um, <clears throat> by the Syrian government were correct, but there are still questions that are outstanding. And these questions have not been cleared up more than four years after the declaration was first made. There was a long list of questions that were given to the Syrian government by the OPCW 
in November, for example, some responses were received from the Syrian government, but not to the entire satisfaction of the OPCW nor of the Security Council. For example, there were 27 production sites, 25 have been uh, already destroyed, two were awaiting destruction within the next two or three months, and from what I understand is that the uh, airstrikes that were carried out by the US, the UK, and France actually destroyed one of those production sites. I understand they also destroyed one of the research facilities. And this research facility is actually one of the main focus areas of the OPCW, where they are not getting what they consider um, question, uh, good answers from the Syrian government in terms of clarification what happened there. And if this, uh, this uh, research facility was destroyed, then actually that is a bit of a concern because that also means that any evidence that might have been there is also destroyed. And that is a research facility okay. called Buzz. Angela, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Good to speak with you. Angela Kane there, live from Paris.